<laughs> so, everybody, welcome uh, to the program. And uh, this week it's a little bit of a different format. We've got a couple of guests because there's a couple of big announcements happening here in Manchester. It's so busy that there's probably a lot of uh, ambient noise and you can't hear me. But um, first thing is the launch of the BBC coverage of the, um, the World Cup. And then after that, there's going to be an announcement from IMG about the remodelling of the game in Britain. Uh, and I'm, I'm really happy that I'm joined by... Uh, uh, Scotland's Dale Ferguson and um, obviously a, a, a big couple of what is it almost a, it's a couple of months really now isn't it Dale uh, coming coming up for the for the Bravehearts um, how much have you had to do with the boys uh, so far has, has there been much much going on and coach Nathan Graham uh, yeah sort of we've uh, sort of all touched base uh, we've had a couple of meetings and uh, the training we're going to camp next week um, in Edinburgh uh, we've got a week's training um, then we're going to play against the England Knights up in Edinburgh, uh, which is a very good test for us uh, before his first game against Italy in uh, Newcastle. Now, uh, Lachlan Coote is the one we're all sort of uh, wondering if he's going to play. He's, um, he's had some head knocks this year. Uh, can you give us any information on whether he's playing? Uh, I'll be honest, we, d- we don't know. He's, he's in the groups, like the chats and stuff. Yeah. Um, the coaching staff have obviously relayed everything back to us with the concern, um, but that's out of our hands. Um, we'll just take, wait, take to the field with a team that Nathan obviously names. Yeah. Now you live in England and you come to this event and it's all all England, you know. Um, what, what's that like living with you? Kind of flying under the, the radar a little bit, aren't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, we sort of look to Australia as like the superior sort of thing. Um, when we play play against the sort of Australia, Samoa, Tonga, Fiji, it's, it's a massive test for us. Some of some of our boys over here will never ever get the experience to play against some some world class players, and this tournament sort of opens doorways where. It, they can test itself against the world's best. I was there that night where you drew with New Zealand, which was a fantastic occasion. Can you take us inside the squad, sort of, I guess, after victories and, and great results, and also in the build-up where you talk about your families and about what um, what it means to them uh, to represent Scotland? I mean, how, is, that a, is that a constant theme during the camps? That, that's basically, you've hit the nail on the head uh, in regards to Scotland Rugby League. We're all about family. Uh, with me personally... Growing up, um, I had grand- great grandparents who lived just outside Murrayfield. And growing up as a kid, I remember telling my great grandma that one day I'd actually play at that stadium. Uh, I was quite fortunate to play in a, a magic weekend. Uh, I think it was 2010, uh, but I never dreamed to captain Scotland. Um, and I can I can imagine my family, my heritage to my Scottish heritage. Everyone would be so proud of me, and that's the main honour. And you do have a sort of home international against England Knights coming up uh, next weekend as well so that's going to be a great experience too isn't it yeah definitely uh, every time we play on uh, scotland soil we we give us all and his families will be there and everyone will travel and make a big sketch of it now what what's it like planning for these games where you come into camp quite late not late but you know you're not in like a club team you can't get too tactical um so is it more about emotion and getting getting sort of a fired up than a, than a club game because of sort of the preparation isn't the same uh, or is it still quite technical and tactical, you know? No, no, it's obviously we sort of borrowed time when we get together. It's a uh, short time. We need to get the ball rolling pretty quick. So it's more about getting sort of set plays and stuff. But as soon as we're then bagpipes, that's when we get the fire in his belly and we get his game on. <laughs> and what about between World Cups? I mean, obviously there, isn't, there aren't enough games, are there, really? No, I, I'd, I'd like to see a lot more international games and mid-season tests. I know the England boys get a... Uh, get sort of exposure and stuff but even even with Scotland, Wales, Ireland I, th- I think there could definitely be more international games throughout the season but it's out of my pulse. <laughs> now um, the, 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 uh, just uh, go through for the listeners the teams in your group and um, how many how many of these guys have you played against before? Uh, to be honest I've not really sort of played against a lot of them. I played against Italy uh, in the 2013 World Cup uh, we'll come away with a draw um, I played alongside Dean Parata uh, at Featherstone last year, and Dean's a legend of a bloke, and I'm looking forward to sort of getting alongside and playing against him again. Um, Australia speak for themselves, world class number one. Um, be a great test for myself and my team to obviously play against the world's best. And then you obviously got Fiji. I've never ever played against Fiji, but watching them, big physical throughout the park, and you know it's going to be a tough game. Well, it's nice of you to talk to us, Dale, and we'll see, I'm sure we'll see plenty of you during the tournament. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Good on you, mate.